Greetings, everybody. Tuesday, August the 11th, another pretty sunny day in the neighborhood overall. We've got just a kind of a steady chance of showers throughout most all of your forecast, similar to what we had yesterday, a few tweaks made time and temperature-wise. Shower chances pretty consistent between now and this time next week, but an update before I leave you. Also, before I leave you, several arrests to discuss this evening. One McGoffin County man arrested for the theft of a truck that we reported back last October. Also, a fire reported here in Sagersville earlier today in the Sugar Camp area of Dixie that completely destroyed a local home. Uh, we've also got a COVID update for you today and where numbers have continued to drastically climb here locally. Uh, the mayor and public health director here in Sagersville tells us of a local business voluntarily closing after several employees there have tested positive. We are approaching 50 total cases here in McGoffin County and seven reported in just the last two days. Also, Shepard saying that a large number of these local cases are being spread from individuals ignoring quarantine. We'll have that for you. The governor's information that he released today and some other details of course on several other fronts a snake bite as well involving a small child in mcgoffin county last night an announcement from the judge's office here in mcgoffin county the mcgoffin county courthouse and only the mcgoffin county courthouse not the justice center or any other buildings will be closed this thursday it was something they attempted to do weeks ago but they are installing a very large backup generator to power that facility and they have to cut all electricity to the building this thursday to make those connections so the courthouse and only the courthouse here in mcgoffin county to be closed this thursday well, following the governor's recommendations yesterday that in-person classes should not start until September the 28th, most schools announcing their plans to do just that. Floyd County in the neighboring county, an area one of many to say that they will still begin on their original set date of September the 8th with virtual learning and that they will plan on with hopes of starting in-person classes later on on September the 28th or thereafter. McGoffin County Schools also issuing a same similar blanket statement earlier today saying in lieu of the governor and the state's recommendations yesterday, they too will continue to open virtually on September the 8th and in-person classes will begin on or after September the 28th as that situation is closely monitored. We will be giving you information from the schools about your child's schedule, uh, any questions you may have, and how they plan on uh, doing their virtual learning so we'll look for that here on the program and in the Sagersville independent very very soon several arrests to report to you tonight the first the arrest of a mcgoffin county man for the theft of a pickup truck it was actually stolen in downtown Sagersville last october and the subject of an earlier report around that time you may recall my reporting late last October, a pickup truck belonging to a Mr. Donnie Bradley was stolen at the lower end of Sagersville as he had, as he had parked it in a parking area there at the lower end of town and was attending a Halloween event and returning back to find his truck stolen and most importantly thousands of dollars worth of construction tools as well, none of which I think have been recovered. The truck was found somewhere in a neighboring county and an investigation uh, took place for the next several weeks and months the vehicle recovered and the tools i think still sought after ultimately a warrant has been in the name of this man for quite some time now for the past few months and authorities were finally able to serve that warrant this week that against matthew mullins of sagersville charged with theft by unlawful taking ten thousand dollars or more he's also facing another charge that being of possession of methamphetamine, Officer Jeremy Watson obtained the arrest warrant here in Sagersville some months ago and has been searching for Mullins since. He actually received a handwritten document the victim did uh, from Mullins saying that he indeed had stolen the truck. He was also charged with possession of methamphetamine after being found in possession of a small Ziploc bag of the substance when being served the warrant for theft of the automobile. 
In the second case, Mark Blankenship, 32, of Paintsville, was arrested this week and is still lodged in the Big Sandy Jail on speeding, reckless driving, fleeing and evading, and wanton endangerment charges. This after authorities with the Johnson County Sheriff's Department says that he took off at a high rate of speed, headed south on 1428 in Johnson County, making a left turn on the Route 321, running a stop sign, passing several vehicles as he traveled southbound reaching speeds of over 100 miles per hour in the police chase. He finally made a turn onto an industrial park area and jumped the railroad tracks. The subject then continued on, recklessly endangering the lives of many others until he was finally caught and arrested uh, and charged with wanton endangerment in the first of a police officer, two counts, fleeing and evading police in the first degree, possession of drug paraphernalia, reckless driving, speeding, wanton endangerment, uh, another count, and the list does indeed go on. The last arrest to making, making headlines this evening is that of a McGoffin County man identified as Burl Jason Holland, who was arrested by the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department last evening at around 10 o'clock on Jim Arnett Branch. Victims say that Holland came to a camper where two of them were staying, pushed an AC window, AC unit, into the camper that was in the window and then set fire to the camper outside. Two occupants came out and saw him set fire to one of the portions of the camper, a portion of the camper he'd already set fire to another, one where the propane tank would have been. He also set fire to the camper at other locations and it was burning when authorities arrived and put the fire out. He was charged with menacing and arson in the first degree. Authorities described him as hearing and seeing things that weren't there and being manifestly under the influence at the time. Come to Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville and get your prescriptions filled, your over-the-counter medications and immune system boosters all from the safety and comfort of your own vehicle, either in their drive through or with their new curbside service. You can also call ahead or just download the My GNP app, that's Good Neighbor Pharmacy, and refill and manage your prescriptions right from your device, helping you and yours stay healthy and safe. Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville, 349-4400. The fields and the stands may be empty, and big events as we know them are just gone for 2020, but there is still a real need that's out there. McGoffin County Community Day needs your support. For the past 16 years, Community Day has been instrumental in helping our local nonprofits and civic groups raise the funds for all the good things they do for our community. And this year, instead of the traditional event, the 2020 McGoffin County Community Day fundraising activities are going to continue with an online fundraiser that's open until August the 31st where gifts can be made online at bgcf.givingfuel.com slash community day to support our 18 local nonprofits who need your help now more than ever. All the money raised will be split equally between those groups and most importantly, for every dollar you donate, the foundation will match it with $2 up to 35 grand. That means your gift of 20 bucks becomes 60 or your gift of $100 becomes $300 to support those important programs and crucial services provided by our local nonprofits. So please go to bgcf.givingfuel.com slash community day and donate today. Connolly Tire in Staffordsville is now a proud partner of Rough Country for all of your suspension and lift kit applications. And you can always go to ConnollyTire.net to get the latest offers. Like right now, $100 when you buy a set of Mickey Thompsons, $100 on a set of Continentals, and many, many more summer deals, including $35 computer diagnostics. That's Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. McGoffin County isn't the only Eastern Kentucky County continuing to see numbers climb in relation to COVID-19. I don't have today's numbers for Johnson County, but yesterday in Johnson County, five new cases reported involving a 32, a 37, a 49, a 54, and a 58-year-old or individuals, I should say, of that age. Johnson County, as of yesterday, with 74 cases, 29 recovered, 45 are still considered to be active, and they currently have six Johnson Countyans hospitalized 
in serious condition with the coronavirus. Here in McGoffin County, at least three hospitalized, and after speaking with Mayor and Public Health Director Pete Shepard in this following interview, he was fearful that we were going to hear more uh, McGoffin Countyans hospitalized perhaps in the near future after following those cases, but at least three or four right now still in the hospital, some, some at least one still in the intensive care unit. But Shepard is with us tonight to discuss several new positive cases, several of those at a local business which is going to close voluntarily for a brief time to sterilize and clean and as we approach 50 total cases here in McGoffin County he says we've had seven in just the last two days and he also confirms that a large number of the total cases that we have seen in McGoffin County stem from an individual or possibly individuals he did not name or count that were ignoring or have ignored their quarantine instructions even though testing positive in some cases. I know if it's overwhelming for me to keep track of, I can't fathom what it's like for you guys and uh, the ladies at the health department, but we had 16 cases two weeks ago. We had 32 a week ago, essentially doubled in a week's time. And today, with the numbers that you're giving me here, we're standing at 47 positive cases, which has resulted in probably 500 people or more being quarantined because of direct exposure. What so? In looking at the cases for the last two days, let's begin there. How many did we have yesterday, and what is their relation to other cases? Okay, we had four, four yesterday and three today. Uh, three were a little related yesterday, and three are related to some over the weekend and yesterday, too. So it's uh, uh, a lot of them are being related to cases within the ones we've had quarantined. And it's also my understanding that this is shutting down at least a number of these cases shutting down for a brief time at least, a local business. you all have an announcement to make? Uh, yes, we have a statement put out on, on Facebook and, and, and all social media, but uh, today the uh, Elk Creek uh, BP uh, has announced that they're shutting down till Friday uh, for cleaning and sterilization. And what we're saying is that anyone that was in the BPs from Friday till today needs to uh, watch for symptoms. It's a very low risk factor that you have contacted anything there, but it's it's a it's a it's a chance you could have. So uh, what we're asking everybody is to watch symptoms uh, and uh, contact the health department if you have any questions. But uh, we are they are shut down voluntarily to clean and sterilize the uh, the establishment. It's my assumption, just in looking at the numbers and following your reports, that. Maybe, I don't know, Pete, I'm just throwing a number out there, but maybe as many as half of these 47 positive cases we have, am I right in saying that they might be related to people who should have been quarantined and were refused to do so and then affected others? Is that possible? Probable? Uh, probable. Uh, we've traced some of these back, and it looks like that uh, some of the, the problems we're having is people not taking the quarantine uh, seriously. Uh, we're telling them to quarantine, we check on them. They say they're in quarantine, but uh, then when we check the new positives we're getting, it uh, seems like they're having contact with uh, uh, people that should have been staying at home. So, so we're talking about individuals either testing positive and refusing to quarantine or being quarantined for a significant chance that they could become positive and ignoring those and spreading the virus. That's uh, true, that, that's correct. I'll go on. I don't have words that I can share with you right here with, okay. on, on, on the television for that. Uh, you referred last night, I know, on social media that um, a couple of businesses might be the subject of citation or otherwise. Has anything changed on that, or what is the status? Uh, no, I'm still trying to get... We've been so busy here today with, uh, with the cases we've had today and with the issues that we're dealing with. Uh, and uh, I just want to tell, her, tell the businesses that this is the reason that we're asking the employees and the customers that come into these stores to wear a mask. Uh, you're at risk uh, without wearing the mask and uh, due to issues with the uh, these businesses, if you don't do this, then there's a chance that you're going to have to voluntarily shut down to clean just like this or we're going to start and you'll be getting fines too. But uh, yes, we I'm still working on the warnings for, for two businesses in town and we're really going to start monitoring this and uh, because this is a serious issue. We've got a lot more cases than we've had, and it's 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 really going to it can it can really snowball really quickly. 
As you may have heard, Governor Bashir had to cancel a press release that was set for earlier this afternoon, an announcement to be made not on the coronavirus front and nothing to do with his normal coronavirus update because he and both his wife were starting to feel ill. I'll have an update on their condition as well as the information that his office did release from today's numbers or pertaining to today's numbers in just a second. The seasonal shop is open and they're still doing curbside pickup so you can call and place orders and they'll still bring them out to you. And inside you'll find all new merchandise throughout the entire store, all new spring and summer women's clothing from Charlie Page and Mud Pie, accessories, jewelry, shoes and bags too, casual outfits for every day or special occasion outfits and dresses. And if you've been home a lot and really want to freshen up your decor, they have so much to choose from and they're happy to give you any fresh ideas that you might need. And just in, a large selection of Simply Southern and Candleberry at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. Car accidents don't stop. Accidents at work don't stop. Disability and SSI cases don't stop. Your legal needs and concerns don't stop for the coronavirus and neither does McFarland and Tinker. They are open, able to schedule appointments per CDC guidelines, and always available for telephone and video conferences. Please, be safe, be smart, stay home, and don't let your legal needs fall victim to the pandemic. Call McFarland and Tinker and let them take care of them for you. The governor and his wife both started to feel ill, as they described earlier this afternoon, to the point that they took steps to protect themselves and everyone around them and canceled an event they had scheduled for around one o'clock. Uh, they also are not, the governor that is, not having a, another live update or press conference he'll, until tomorrow at four o'clock, but he did issue today's numbers and some more information. The video from yesterday's press conference with the governor issuing a statement today saying that he wanted to let everyone know that both he and his family were okay. They did test negative after a real scare earlier today. But he went on to say that as of 4 o'clock this evening, we have about 35,793 cases of COVID-19 in Kentucky with 562 new cases reported today. 18 of those newly reported cases were in children 5 years of age or younger, including an 18-day-old boy from Hardin County and a 1-month-old in Rowan County and a 3-month-old in Lincoln. Eight new deaths were announced today, bringing that total to 783. Three of those deaths in women ages 54, 65, and 60. As of today, there is a 5.87 positivity rate factoring in all of Kentucky's numbers. These numbers today on the heels of the governor yesterday, of course, suggesting that schools wait until September the 28th to have in-person classes and also saying that effective as of today, bars are able to open and restaurants can increase their capacity to 50% as long as all other guidance requiring social distancing, facial coverings, and sanitation is followed. Again, the next press conference still set for tomorrow at 4. Also on the coronavirus front, it kind of leaked out yesterday but wasn't confirmed from the likes of ESPN and others till today. But the Big Ten is the first of the Big Five to postpone college football for the rest of this year as a result of the pandemic. There are 14 universities that make up the Big Ten, and they collectively voted in favor of postponing 2020 football season in hopes of playing it next spring. Now sports fans, teams, and the like are putting their eyes on the SEC, the Big 12, ACC, and Pac-12 to see if they will follow suit. I ran short yesterday. My apologies. Nearly did today with another busy news day, but I do have some makeup to do in regards to a few announcements. One was a birthday that we were to have, I think, on yesterday's program, and a few other announcements for you as we turn to our McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. 
Yes, my apologies. This was a birthday that I think I was to have either yesterday or Friday. You're going to have to forgive me. It's just been one of those weeks. But you, LaFay Gamble, I'm sorry, but it's a belated birthday and it's on me. Your brother, Terry, I believe it is. Trenton, Tanya, friends and family. I hope I got all that right. I know it's a little late, but nevertheless, you, LaFay, happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And I also had to leave our funeral services off last evening, so with my apologies as well, I want to recap tonight. Services were held earlier today for 45-year-old Gary Pennington of Sagersville, survived by his wife Tasha, uh, son Gary Neal, daughters Chelsea, Collinsworth, Haley Pennington, and Zoe Pennington. Services held again earlier today in his honor. 48-year-old Priscilla Jean Allen Howard of Sagersville passed away this week, survived by her husband Christopher Charles Howard, and preceded in death by son Lonnie Eugene Howard, survived by daughter Cheyenne Nicole Howard, several brothers and sisters as well. Funeral services in her honor to be held tomorrow at 1 o'clock from the Tip Top Church in lieu of flowers. The McGoffa County Funeral Home says contributions can be made to the Priscilla Howard Memorial Fund. 69-year-old Violet Wireman Pitts of Mount Sterling passed away on Sunday, formerly of McGoffin County, the daughter of the late Malcolm and Roxy Wireman. She survived by sons Billy Pitts and Hank Pitts and daughter LaDonna Stand, as well as brother Ricky Lee Wireman and sisters Farley Wireman, Carrie Joseph, and Molly Sturgill. Arrangements incomplete at this time. Garland Howard, age 80, of Sagersville passed away on today's date at his home, McGoffa County Funeral Home says arrangements are incomplete at this hour, but to be announced soon. And lastly, another announcement that I was to have had Friday, but in my absence, now belated. But it was to have come in loving memory of James M. Howard on August the 6th, on what would have been his 90th birthday. With love and remembrance from his wife Rose, daughters Gail, Diana, sons Terry and Gary, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Summer heat and no AC make for a miserable drive. But don't sweat it. Call Black Smoke Performance in Sagersville for inspection, diagnostics, and repair by qualified technicians with the latest technology and equipment. Don't suffer in the summer heat. Get your air conditioning fixed today at Black Smoke Performance. Oh, it's what a lot of you have been waiting for. They're back, but only for a limited time. Loaded potato wedges at your Sagersville Lee's famous recipe. That's right, our famous hand-cut homemade potato wedges smothered in cheddar cheese, real crispy bacon, topped with either sour cream or ranch, your choice. And they're still only $2.49 with tax. Get them while you can at your Sagersville Lee's. Rescue and EMS responded to a snake bite in McGoffin County late last night. A little girl, around the age of seven, I am told, playing in her yard, bitten seriously by a copperhead. And just as I understand, as a matter of observation, I'm so glad to report at this hour, remains hospitalized. I reached out to immediate family today, but understandably haven't heard back as they are still in the hospital with their little girl who was bitten by what's left of that copperhead last night off of Jake Wireman Fork. I'm told by EMS who responded it was around 10 o'clock last night when the call came in. The young girl playing in the yard, as of course she very well should have been, when she was bitten on the back of her lower leg by the copperhead seen here. I'm really hard to tell the exact size. I don't think it was a very large snake, even though it maybe appears as though here. Smaller ones, though, can be worse in, I think, regards to venom. Nevertheless, it was described to me as biting her so hard they literally had to knock it off her leg. I'm also told this little girl was perhaps more calm than any adult could have been, and that was very important in her doing perhaps as well as she is. She was kept calm, remained calm and brave, and that is always the very best thing, one of the very best things you can do besides seeking 
immediate medical attention with a venomous snake in the case of being bitten by a copperhead such as this. We hope she continues to improve. This was a structure fire earlier today on Sugar Camp. The right-hand fork of Sugar Camp Fire Chief Paul Howard telling me on scene that he confirmed that the resident was not at home at the time of this fire. It was later believed they may have left a dryer, clothes dryer running when leaving. I'm also glad to report since they were not home, no injuries were sustained, and that the pets who live at this home were actually just next door at a relative's and also uninjured, but the home um, a complete and total loss and fully engulfed in flames. Real quickly, if you haven't seen this video, goodness, I didn't have time to show this yesterday, but my goodness, this woman in Louisiana nearly injured or worse by debris from the tree that was ex completely imploded or exploded by lightning just as she walked out her front porch. The power of lightning, we're reminded sometimes with videos and accounts just like these. Now going on to your Licking Valley RECC outlook, as I know I got started a little late, but just another busy news day in the neighborhood. Partly cloudy skies out there tonight, only about a 10% chance of showers for the rest of the evening, and that's mainly before 8. 66 degrees for tonight's where we should be, and we're still very consistent weather-wise. There is one better chance of some showers there towards the latter part of your screen if you will, but tomorrow, upper 80s again, partly sunny for your Wednesday, and a 30% chance of showers and storms, mainly between 4 and 7 tomorrow afternoon, early evening. Nighttime lows around 67 tomorrow night. Thursday, very similar, partly sunny, upper 80s, and after about 3 or 4 in the afternoon, about a 30% chance of some showers and storms. Friday, though, a still better chance of showers and storms and a 60% likelihood, really, for some of us at least. Partly sunny, but after 4 or 5 o'clock Friday, a pretty good shot at some showers and storms to the tune of 60, maybe even 60, 70% or so. That's for your Friday. And Saturday, I'm sad to say, looks much like Friday with another 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms a little earlier in the afternoon, say after 1 o'clock on Saturday. But temperatures finally back off a bit with that next system and down to the low to mid-80s from there on out. 83 Saturday, partly sunny and a 60% chance. Sunday, 84, mostly sunny and a 40% chance. Monday, 84, down to just 80 degrees by Tuesday of next week, but still mostly sunny and still with a mostly small chance of showers and storms. And that's going to wrap it up for tonight. If all goes as has been, we'll have some more breaking and other news for you tomorrow night on another show that you'll want to be here to see. And we'll also be talking about what's coming out in this week's edition of the Sagittarius Independent. It's another busy news week there as well. So please join me tomorrow night and enjoy the rest of your evening.